in today's video, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit more on the serious side. Um, you guys know that about once a month or so, I do videos that are focused on mental health. And I think I just did one semi recently, but I'm going to do another one. I know that a lot of people are more depressed, more anxious, more stressed, more confused, more overwhelmed right now. And so I wanted to do a video that was specifically talking about lessening your anxiety. I myself suffer with generalized anxiety. I am anxious a lot of the time, even if nothing really is going on externally. But over the last month or two, I have found a couple things that have helped me lessen my anxiety. And I just wanted to share those with you guys. Maybe some of them will work for you, maybe not, but that's okay, we're all different. But just some ideas ideas maybe that you've thought about or maybe that you haven't and I just want to share what has worked for me. So if you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. And you could also follow me over on Instagram if you would like. But uh, without further ado, let's get into some like how to lessen anxiety, kind of like coping strategies a little bit, but just some things that have helped me over the last month or two that might help you as well. So I have some notes on my phone. So I'm going to be reading some of these I literally titled it things that lessen my anxiety lately because while a couple of these I've been using to lessen my anxiety for a while some of them are newer ideas or newer things so the first one um, I've talked about this in my last couple videos is that I recently picked up crocheting and so I learned how to crochet probably like in my teens um, and I would make scarves and I was knitting as well so I would make scarves and blankets and hats and stuff like that and um, I did it for years and then I just don't think that I enjoyed it anymore and so I stopped. And then I picked it up again in like my 20s but I realized I didn't really enjoy it so that did not last very long. But then about what, a month ago or six weeks ago or so, I decided to pick it up again and I've really, really been enjoying it. And a couple of the reasons that I am enjoying it so much is because one, it's productive. Um, there are a lot of creative outlets, you know, you actually get a product at the end, whether it's a song or a painting or a blanket that you crocheted. And so it's cool to see something uh, created from nothing, you know, like from yarn and a crochet hook and then you can turn it into a blanket. It's a cool thing to to see yourself create something new out of something else. Um, it has also been keeping me off my phone a little bit more. Um, I am definitely someone who is glued to my phone and I don't really like that about me. It does not bring me joy, which is something that I've been realizing lately um, over the last several months that I'm on my phone for hours and hours and hours a day, just scrolling through Instagram, checking my emails like four times an hour, which is so unnecessary. And so when I'm crocheting, I'm using both my hands. So I don't check my phone as much. Um, and so that's a, been a positive change for me. Hey guys, I wanna interrupt myself for a second. A lot of you know that I'm about to open up an online shop to sell some of my crocheted pieces. And while I've had an online business with YouTube for years, I think it's always so important to continue to learn about what you love, what your business is, and things that you enjoy. And so I feel like I could always continue to learn about online marketing and entrepreneurship and social media. And I know a lot of you guys are interested in using the internet to make money as well. And so I wanted to mention this class that I saw on Skillshare. A lot of you guys know that I've worked with Skillshare in the past, but if you have never heard of them, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. So whether it's for your business or for something that you're interested in or a hobby, they'll probably have a class for you. And so a class that I found that I like but also would recommend to you guys is called Social Media for the Creative Entrepreneur by Peggy Dean. One of the videos that really stuck out to me was number nine, which is titled How Social Media Affects Mental Health. You guys know how much I talk about mental health and social media can really be a struggle with mental health. And so it's really awesome that she talks about it in this video. And so I just wanted to recommend that to you guys. If you're interested in learning about this or really anything else creative, I would highly recommend Skillshare. And they are actually giving away two free months of premium membership to the first thousand people who click the link in my description box below to help you explore your own creativity. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's just get back into the rest of the video. And so that's another thing as well, taking classes, doing something online, again, that uses your brain, that switches your focus from negative to positive or even negative to neutral or something that's hurting you to something that's not hurting you. So it could even be something like taking an online class that could be really, really beneficial to lessen your anxiety because not only are you switching focus from whatever is making you anxious or just from your internal thoughts in general, but you're learning you're growing. And if you're doing something productive for yourself and positive for yourself, it'll just make you feel good. And so the next thing on my list 
is, well, I mentioned being off of my phone um, because being on my phone a lot, I notice causes me anxiety and I don't like that. So if I, you know, leave the house to go grocery shopping, I'll leave my phone at home. Um, even just like little ways here and there to detach from my phone makes me feel a little bit less anxious most of the time. Another thing is Monkey. So you know that I'm living with one of my friends right now and he has a cat named Monkey. And I usually don't like cats very much. I'm not really a cat person. I'm much more of a dog person. But Monkey, again, switching focus. I'm gonna repeat that a lot in this video, but that's kind of the, the theme of this video is switching focus. And so even just like watching Monkey play or looking at him uh, while he's sitting on his cat tree looking outside or when he's sometimes he'll lie on his back and like clean his like chest or his arms, but he'll lie on his back and he kind of looks like an otter and it's really cute. So I hope that you enjoyed some of that footage that I took today of Monkey earlier today because he was being real cute and real silly today. And so again, it's just something that has been if you're anxious, but you switch your focus onto something else that's productive, that's necessary, or that's beneficial, or that's just fun or positive, like anything in that realm. And so Monkey, again, I never really liked cats very much, um, but Monkey is definitely like my favorite cat, probably that I've ever met, at least as an adult. And so just watching him sometimes makes me forget that I'm anxious or makes me forget that I'm feeling really depressed or makes me forget that I'm overwhelmed about something because I'm just focused on something else. Okay, another thing is that, and I actually wrote a bunch of notes, so I'm gonna keep my phone open for this one. Another thing has been playing cards. And so, again, I mentioned that I'm living with my roommate, who's my best friend, and he and I have been playing cards. And so we got just a deck of cards, and we were playing, I think we played, what did we play? Maybe Blackjack once, I think we played War once, and then we played Go Fish. I'm like, let's just play Go Fish, like that sounds fun. And then um, we actually found proper Go Fish cards that actually have like fish and sea life on them, which we just both thought was just really cute. And so we've been playing Go Fish like every other night and it's just been really, really fun. And even though Go Fish, you know, is geared more towards kids, it's seen as a kids game. It's something that we as adults have enjoyed. And so one of the things that I wrote down is that it's not necessarily that we grew out of certain things. You know, like there's a lot of kid things that you might think that you grew out of. I have really been thinking lately that maybe we haven't grown out of certain things. Maybe we haven't grown out of finger painting. Maybe we haven't grown out of playing Go Fish or playing like Hungry Hungry Hippo. Maybe we haven't grown out of things that are geared towards kids. Maybe, and I wrote down, it's not that we grew out of them, but maybe it's that certain things just became socially unacceptable for adults and people judge them. And so it makes some people not wanna do them and not even think if they would like them or not. And so more recently I was like, wait, are there any things that are geared towards kids but that I might enjoy as an adult? Because who cares? Who cares if I want to finger paint? Or who cares if I want to draw in a coloring book but that's made for six year olds, not an adult coloring book? Who cares if I want to get, you know, just a toy or something that's made for kids? I think that there have been some things I also wrote down that have been rebranded, i.e. coloring books. Instead of just saying, hey, if you wanna go color in a kid's coloring book, you can, a lot of companies have made adult coloring books. And so if you want to color in an adult coloring book because you like the designs or something, that's great. But also if you wanna color in Mickey Mouse, that's also great, you know? I think we almost judge ourselves a lot and we let society kind of control us in certain ways that are just so not necessary. Again, like if you want to play, I'm trying to think of what else I even have around here that is like a kid's toy that I'm like, this looks like fun. Um, I think I got little like figurines that you like color on, you know, but that is seen as a kid's thing. It was in the kid's section, just like a little cat or a, like an animal and then there's like markers and you can draw on them. But they have those like color me mind places that are more geared towards adults. And so I think there are just so many things that are kid things, but that society for some reason was like, oh, that's weird if you enjoy that. So maybe let's make an adult version. But if you still like the kid version, if you wanna color in like a little cat that you get from Target, instead of spending a thousand dollars and go to Color Me Mine, that's okay, you know? And so I think that one of the things also that has been lessening my anxiety is being like, Katie, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay if you feel this way. It's okay if you like this thing. It's okay if you don't like this thing that everyone else likes. It's the same thing of like, there are things that are socially acceptable or almost socially pushed on some people. And it's like, no, but it's okay if you don't like that. I mentioned on Instagram the other day, I don't like The Office. I don't like it. The TV show, I don't like it. You know, I watched it and I don't like it. And that's okay. It's okay to have different opinions than other people. Unless they're hurting other people or something. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about if you wanna go watch a kid's movie, go watch it. 
because it's not hurting anyone. And if it could bring you joy, and if you allow it to bring you joy, that's what's important. Because sometimes we get so rigid and we don't allow ourselves to, to feel positive or to feel joy. And that sucks. You know, like that sucks. It's not gonna be beneficial for us or for other people. And so, um, so playing cards. I mean, we wanted to get go fish cards that have little fish on them because it was cute. And we enjoy it when we play and it makes us smile. Like that's okay, you know? And it's, it's more than okay, it's good. It's positive. It's a good choice that we're allowed to make for ourselves. Even if you think other people might judge you, even if it's not what society says is right, if it's not hurting anyone, if it's not hurting you, then who cares? Who cares if you want to finger paint or if you want to play hopscotch? Who cares if you enjoy it? That's what, that's what matters. And so letting a judgment of ourselves or the idea that other people might judge us, first of all, most people do not care what we're doing. It's almost more of an idea that they might and that stops us from doing things. And that's even in business, that's, oh, I kind of want to play keyboard, but like I'm not really good. Who cares if you're not good? Play if you want to. Who cares if you're not good and but you want to record a song? That's great if you want to. Don't let the idea that people are going to judge you or that you might judge yourself or that it might not come out up to standards. Don't let that kind of stuff stop you. Do it if you think it'll bring you joy and you need to allow things to bring you joy. And I feel like I've always been someone who I didn't really allow things to bring me joy and that's something that I'm learning right now to do that and to be able to do that. So the next thing that I wrote down um, that has been lessening my anxiety a little bit is I really like to watch TV, right? But I think to lessen your anxiety, uh, it could be helpful to watch silly, lighthearted TV shows versus more intense or really, really sad TV shows because you might get really involved, you might get upset, you might get anxious. Like a TV show has made me anxious before. And so if you're feeling anxious, um, something more intense might help you. Uh, this is all about figuring out what's best for you. But for me, I rewatched Friends over the last like month. I've had Friends on a lot in the background when I'm crocheting or eating or something like that. And then now I'm starting over uh, Big Bang Theory because it's just lighthearted, it's silly, it's fun to watch, and it does not make me anxious. Again, it's a lot about knowing what makes you anxious. And so if you notice that you're watching a really serious show and it's kind of bringing you down, if you feel like you're um, able to feel that and you do still enjoy it for some reason, great. But if you feel like every time I watch this TV show, it brings me down, then maybe consider why you're watching it and then maybe consider just watching something else. Like, you know, it's, it's cool to be able to change like that. So another thing that has helped with my anxiety has been being around people. And I put people in quotes because I'm not really around people, but I am living with my roommate. And so a lot of you guys know I was living in Charleston by myself for seven months over the winter and spring. And as much as I really liked living alone at certain times, I know that, especially since I'm an extrovert and especially since I do have pretty severe depression and anxiety, being around people or a person that I really care about can be helpful and beneficial for me. And so being around my roommate has just been really nice. Like we'll eat dinner together sometimes, we'll watch TV. We spend most nights, you know, playing cards or watching TV or doing something like that. And it's just been nice for me to, to be around him and to have someone who he's basically like family, you know, who just feel comfortable around and I feel safe around and that we can chit chat or we can just sit in silence and watch TV, that has been helpful for me. Again, I know right now that's a little iffy because it's not really safe to be doing a, a certain things, but I live with him. So we're okay being around each other, watching TV and eating dinner and stuff like that. And it has lessened my anxiety a lot of the time. There's a couple more. So one is focusing on what you have, not letting what you want take over. So with our consumer society, there's always ads trying to convince us that we don't own enough stuff or that we don't have enough stuff. And wanting something is totally fine, but being obsessed about always having the new thing and if I don't have it, then my life sucks, that could potentially not be very beneficial. And so again, this is all about noticing and figuring out for yourself of if you see a new mascara and you're like, oh, that looks really nice, I wanna try that, that's great. But if you kind of realize that, well, I want that mascara and if I don't have it, I'm going to be miserable, that could potentially, we gotta figure it out for ourselves, potentially bring us down even a little bit more. And so I think to even help with your anxiety, it's good to be grateful to be happy with the things that you have, to, to feel so appreciative of the things that you have. And again, wanting stuff is fine, but wanting it to the point that like, if I don't have it, uh, my life sucks, 
just might not be beneficial. And uh, so being grateful and realizing what you have, whether it's food, it's family, it's friends, it's a roof over your head, it's a car, it's that your body works, it's that you're able to walk and that you can see, whether it's stuff that you own, whether it's that your computer works, whether it's something small or something great, it's, it's really important to be grateful, to kind of even think about that kind of stuff for a couple minutes a day can be beneficial in lessening your anxiety. And the last thing that I wrote down is setting boundaries. And so this is one of the newest ones for me because I was never good at setting boundaries ever. But over the last couple months or so, I have learned to set boundaries, especially in um, relationships with other people because I have always been someone like a yes, person. I would always just say yes. I would always just do whatever someone asks of me. I would always try to make other people happy and making other people happy is great. That is something that is really, really good, but not if it's always bringing us down. And so sometimes it's okay to say no. Sometimes it's okay to say no if someone asks you if you wanna hang out but you don't feel comfortable hanging out right now, it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no if someone says, if you live with a roommate and they said you wanna watch this movie but you actually hate that movie, it's okay to say no. There's you know importance of compromise and stuff but setting boundaries so that you're just not drowning in everyone else's expectations can be really, really beneficial. And so I wrote down something else about boundaries Deciding what I'm okay with and what I'm not. Deciding what's best for me and what isn't. Saying no sometimes in relationships, dating, friends, work, societal expectations, etc. Let me know in the comments if you're like this too. Like I have a hard time saying no sometimes to people. And again, being helpful and kind and compassionate are incredible things. But if we're gonna take care of our own mental health, there are just gonna be some times that it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. It's okay to have boundaries. It's okay to know how you want to be treated. It's okay to know what you want in a friend. It's okay to speak your mind. It's okay to stand up for yourself. All those things are okay. And it's okay that if someone's pushing you down to be like, I'm not allowing this to happen. And so having boundaries, again, it's so new for me, but wow, it's so important. And when I realized like, oh, you know, I don't like how this person's treating me, I'm gonna exit the conversation and I'm not apologizing about it later because it's not anything I need to apologize about it brings you a sense of self-awareness and appreciation of your own self-worth that's really, really important and again, could help lessen your anxiety. So that's really all I have written down, but then I have just one last like paragraph um, kind of like overall explaining this kind of stuff. The whole point is that you need to pay attention and learn about yourself. Sometimes we even have hobbies and habits that we've had for a long time that actually add to our anxiety, but we barely notice because we've been doing them for so long. One thing for me that I've learned recently is that sometimes I can be on Instagram for a few minutes and I can feel fine, I can enjoy it, I can like watching people's stories, I can like scrolling through and looking at puppies, but other times I can be scrolling through Instagram and I can feel my anxiety growing in my chest. And so that's when I have to tell myself to change my focus and to just be aware like, hey Katie, you're doing this and this is increasing your anxiety. And especially sometimes with mental health issues with anxiety and depression and stuff like that, we can spiral. We can feel like we're drowning in it and we might not even wanna get out because the drowning gets comfortable and it's such a messed up thing, but sometimes that happens. But if we want to lessen that anxiety, we have to, right when we notice it happening, do something to switch our focus. And so if I notice that I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm all of a sudden getting anxious or feeling like, oh my gosh, Katie, go do something different, then I have to go do something different. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep growing and growing. So that's when I have to tell myself to change focus and do something positive for me. It's hard to realize what's best for us, especially because society and everyone else is trying to tell us what's best for us, when there are some things that are universally good for us, right? But there are other things that are so personal and it's up to us to figure them out for ourselves. And so as much as you could take advice from someone else, make sure to try it out for yourself and make sure that it's actually right for you. So it's just important to figure it all out for ourselves, for our own mental health, for our own self-worth, our self-esteem. Oh, one last thing that I just realized, I didn't write it down, is that I have started unfollowing some accounts on Instagram that make me feel less than. And it's not even their fault, it's not their fault at all. It's not the other person's fault. It's not my fault either. It's just that there are going to be some people that you follow on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter, that do not add to your happiness and that are also not necessary in your life. Because there are some things that might not necessarily add to your joy, but they're necessary. You know, like paying your bills and stuff. It might not make you feel joy, but you gotta do it. And you can still be appreciative, wow, that you have bills to pay, that you have the money to pay them, that you have electricity and all that kind of stuff. But there are definitely things in your life that if they don't bring you joy, you can, you can get rid of them. 
So if there's Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, YouTube accounts, even like I said earlier, a hobby that you've always had, if you're realizing that it's not bringing you joy, you can get rid of it. And so there have been quite a few accounts on Instagram that I realized have not been bringing me joy. And then I found a couple others that have brought me more joy. A lot of things in your life you can't control, but a lot of things you can. And that's one of them. Who you follow on the internet is something that you can control. And I think it's important to follow what brings you joy and not just follow someone to hate on them. You you know, like, cause wow, that's not beneficial for anyone. We don't need to be spreading hate. Um, and so, yeah, so I just kind of have unfollowed some people that I don't want to follow. And I started following some other people and it has lessened my anxiety because I'm not looking at these accounts that make me feel some sort of anxious or um, questioning myself or questioning my body or something like that. Um, I'm following other accounts that that are making me feel more loved even um, and making me feel more like I can love myself better. And so that's something that we can definitely choose to do as well. And so I just wanted to talk today about this. Um, again, I know that a lot of people are extra anxious and extra confused and overwhelmed and depressed right now. And I just wanted to share with you some of the things that I have been doing over the last month or two that have helped to lessen my anxiety. I still do have pretty severe anxiety, but some of these things, especially like the crocheting, I just get focused on the crocheting and I'm watching a fun show at the same time and a couple of the new Instagram accounts that I'm following, I have noticed lessened my anxiety a little bit and brought me more joy. And whenever I talk about joy, I'm always going to say that, you know, reading your Bible or going to an online church service or praying could always be something beneficial because God is never gonna leave you and God wants to add joy to your life. And so, yeah, I just wanted to share these things with you. Um, if you have anything that you've been doing recently that has lessened your anxiety, please let me know in the comments so that I can read it and that other people can read it as well. Because some things are gonna work for multiple people, some things aren't. Some of these things that I mentioned might work for you and they might not. But again, it's so important to figure out what works for you, to be honest with yourself, to be vulnerable with yourself, and to really pay attention and make the changes that are important in your life so that you can be the best version of yourself that you can be. And also understand that being the best version of yourself takes a lot of changes. Like everything that you're doing today that might be bringing you to a great version of yourself in a year from now, you might have to add a couple things or eliminate a couple things. So it's a lot about focus. It's a lot about just taking care of yourself and doing what you know is right for you, even if you think other people might put you down or laugh at you or judge you, then those are not the people that you want to listen to anyway. If you would not take advice from someone, if you do not want something that they have, then we should not be taking criticism from them either. We should not be letting them bring us down. We should not let anyone bring us down, but especially people that are not actually in our lives. And so again, I just wanted to share these things with you. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I guess that's gonna be it. Please make sure that you're subscribed and follow me on Instagram as well if you would like. And again, let me know in the comments anything that you've been doing recently that has been helping you with your anxiety or depression, I would love to see. And I'm sure a lot of you guys would also love to see everyone else's answers as well. So that's gonna be it. Thanks again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you, Jesus loves you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.